Hello and welcome to the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Royal Decree 71 of 2020. The Royal Decree stipulates the abolition of paragraph 7 of Decree 57 of 2016 regarding the affiliation and organization of the Information and E Government Authority. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, conveyed to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa the congratulations of His Highness Prince Aga Khan, British businessman, founder of the Aga Khan Development Network, and one of the prominent horse owners on the kingdom's success in organizing the Bahrain International Trophy. In a telephone call held today, His Highness Sheikh Nasser was congratulated by His Highness Prince Aga. Khan on the success of the victorious team in winning four races and claiming the Bahrain International Trophy. His Highness expressed thanks to His Highness Prince Khan, hailing his world reputation in international championships and wishing him success. Prince Khan praised His Majesty the King's care for the equestrian sport in Bahrain, hailing His Highness Sheikh Nasser's efforts in developing equestrian sports, which earned the kingdom landmark achievements recently. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, participated in the meeting of the Council of Representatives this morning, which was chaired by the Council Speaker Fawzia Zainal. The session dealt with the youth in cooperation with the Ministry of Youth and Sports and was attended by a number of ministers, 50 members of youth organizations, along with school and university students. His Highness gave a speech following the commencement of the session in which he conveyed the thanks and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the youth and all of the meeting's participants. His Highness renewed his congratulations to the youth for what came in His Majesty's speech at the commencement of the third session of the fifth legislative term. He expressed confidence in the youth's ability to contribute to the country's future and affirmed that the empowerment of youth is a priority in order to make them a key part in achieving the country's sustainable development goals. He praised the Council's youth program, which he said deals with the youth's reality and wished the youth and the rest of the attendees the best of luck. Zainal then welcomed the attendees and wished them success. She praised the way the session implements His Majesty's vision to support the youth and empower them to participate in all aspects of the country's development. She also expressed appreciation for the cooperation of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad in empowering the youth. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Humaydan, affirmed that the Kingdom's victory of the highest number of awards in the Arab Government Excellence Award, including the Khatwa Program for Home Projects by the Ministry of Labor, reflects the support and vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the keenness of Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and their interest in the economic and social empowerment of Bahraini citizens as a supreme goal to achieve sustainable development in the country. He noted that the national achievement will promote the name of the kingdom on the map of regional and Arab development work. Humaydan expressed pride in the selection of Khatwa as one of the most prominent successful projects in the field of social development. He noted that the project had achieved its goals as the number of household production license owners has risen to 864 since the launch of the program. The financing of the family bank had also contributed 47 productive families into successful entrepreneurs.
In line with the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to allocate 5,000 units, the Minister of Housing Basim bin Yaqub Al Hamar announced the beginning of the distribution of units as part of the third phase of Lijlaya district in Eastern Head City to eligible recipients. Al Hamar said that the Eastern Head town represents one of the key pillars of the ministry's program related to the royal order issued by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to construct 40,000 units. He pointed out that the progress of work reflects His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's keenness on following up on the projects of the new residential cities in the kingdom, particularly the Eastern Head Town, aimed to achieve His Majesty the King's vision to fast-track the delivery of units. He said that the ministry had notified citizens who were nominated to report to its headquarters this morning to finalize procedures in compliance with the mandate precautionary measures. The Minister of Information Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumihi participated in a virtual conference on Arab Chinese cooperation in the field of media, which was organized by the Arab League, which was attended by media ministers from Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, and China. The minister said in his opening statement that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is keen on deepening bilateral ties with China, which have long been characterized by cooperation, friendship and mutual respect. He said that this is reflected by Manama's hosting of the third ministerial conference on Arab-Chinese cooperation in May 2008 and another in 2010. The minister confirmed that the Arab-Chinese efforts towards cooperation are being enhanced during the pandemic and that media represents the medium for unifying all of those efforts to enhance civilizational and strategic cooperation and to raise public awareness in order to serve shared interests. al Rumehi then spoke on the Bahraini experience of containing the pandemic through precautionary measures upon the directives of His Majesty the King, along with the efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He expressed appreciation for the effective health system in Bahrain, its sustainability and the quality of its services. He added that Bahrain furnished those who have been financially affected by the pandemic with economic support and other measures which affirm the international standing of the kingdom in the field of human development, communication and information systems. The minister affirmed Bahrain's full support for international development and health initiatives in solidarity with China as the first country that has been affected by the pandemic. He concluded by calling for documenting the Arab-Chinese media partnership and agreeing on a media plan to support the goals of the Belt and Road Initiative. The Bahraini vessel Al Zubara of the Royal Bahrain Naval Force, the RBNF, arrived successfully to the kingdom today after departing from the port of Falmouth in the United Kingdom. An official reception ceremony at Salman Marine Base of the RBNF was held, where the commander of the RBNF, Commodore Muhammad Yusuf Al Asam, delivered a speech that the accession of Al Zubara vessel is a reflection of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Khalifa's patronage of the RBNF and the support of the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, which enables the RBNF to carry out its duties and preserve the gains of the kingdom and its territorial and economic waters. In his speech, the RBNF Commander extended thanks to the BDF Commander-in-Chief. He also thanked the commander of the mission, the captain of the ship. Officers, non-commissioned officers and personnel of Al Zubara for their excellence in training and for implementing the task they were assigned to on the journey to Bahrain. Bahrain Defense Force BDF units participated in the final stage of the joint military exercise Saif Al Arab and showcased its readiness in carrying out the tasks assigned to it through the drill various exercises. The parachute personnel conducted the joint jump while flying the flags of the participating countries, which showcased 
the extent of harmony along the special forces servicemen in carrying out their tasks with accuracy and high competence. During the final phase of the joint drill, the Bahraini forces showcased their accuracy in hitting targets and high maneuverability through joint military action alongside sisterly Arab forces participating in the exercise. The unit's participation added value to this exercise and enabled our armed forces to gain military and command experience at battlefields. The joint drill aimed primarily to increase the combat abilities and unify concepts among the participating Arab troops, as well as to verify their level and performance. It also aimed to provide an opportunity for the troops to exchange expertise, raise the level for their combat preparedness, and enhance their administrative and logistical coordination. Forces from Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Jordan and Sudan participated in the two-week joint drill held at Mohammed Najib military base and other parts of northern Egypt. As part of its efforts to provide the best health services and facilitate procedures for those visiting the facilities of the Salmania Medical Complex, the Salmania Medical Complex Administration announced that it will continue to gradually resume clinical and medical services in the complex. The resumption of services will take place on two phases. The first was launched on the 25th of October with the aim to reactivate medical services and the second is expected to be launched from February to March of next year to resume most surgical procedures that had been postponed during the pandemic. Al Salmania Medical Complex aims to perform 1,000 surgeries in the first phase before the end of this year, which is equivalent to two-thirds of the normal operation capacity. The Kingdom of Bahrain is gearing up for hosting the Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix 2020 this weekend. In an exclusive interview with the Bahrain International Television, F1 Red Bull driver Max Verstappen expressed his readiness for the race. Yeah, well, F1 in general, they did a very good job in, in of course, making sure um, you know, that we would stay safe and uh, also with the measures they took. Uh, it's actually not too, it's not been too bad. Um, of course, yeah, you miss the fans around the track, but o overall, like in the paddock, it's been pretty easy going. I mean, okay, you are wearing a mask, but um, that's more or less it, to be honest. When I landed yesterday, you know, you do the test on, on the airport. I think it's all very well, very well prepared, which is very nice. Um, yeah, I think it's the best thing to do. Um, so, yeah, so far, I mean, it's been really good, actually, here in Bahrain, yeah. I mean, I anyway always enjoy coming to Bahrain. So, um, yeah, no, that was good. Meanwhile, Formula One Red Bull driver Alexander Alban commended Bahrain's precautionary measures to protect all visitors during the current health situation. Seems to mean okay. Um, obviously, you want more from, a, from it as a driver. But uh, overall, um, we've had some good races. We've had some podiums. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I would have liked some things to have changed, but otherwise, a um, lot of lessons learned, and uh, and yeah, I'm I'm reasonably happy with it. Especially for us, it's obviously been a very big difference with all the fans not at the circuits, but also just the the separation. Obviously, Formula One is very much a team sport, so when you have to, you know, be in your own little bubbles, it's it's quite strange, but. Eventually, we get used to it quite quickly, and um, the championship, the teams have done a very good job to, to stay safe and be in control of the situation. Um, coming to Abu Bahrain, it's been obviously very safe, um, as it has been for, for pretty much everywhere we've gone, but um, I have to say Bahrain's done a very good job, especially in the airports, getting in um, and getting tested. It's actually must be on the stricter side to some of the other places we've been to, but that's, that's not a bad thing. It's a lot hotter than the races we've been doing previously, um, so just getting used to the heat. Um, I know it's not hot for you guys, but it is hot for us. So uh, just been training, getting into the um, used to the temperatures in the UK. So training with with jumpers and jackets on, um, and also 
Um, just, you know, the normal things. So we do a lot of simulator driving, getting ready for the circuit, because of course we're doing two different circuits this, in two weeks at the same place. So it's a, it's a very unique um, opportunity. And it's the first time we're going to be doing that. While the Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 1,510 with 169 recoveries, 169 registered new cases and one death. 97 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 71 are contacts of active cases and one is a travel related. The deceased was an 81-year-old male citizen. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces whenever possible. Organized by the Korean Embassy in Bahrain, the Korean ambassador to the kingdom, Hai Kwan Chang, inaugurated the annual Korean Film Festival. The grand opening of the 8th edition of Korea Movie Weeks started yesterday amid full adherence to the precautionary measures of social distancing. The festival will be held in a new formal at the STC Drive in Bahrain at Bahrain Bay over three days. The film Parasite? A dark comedy thriller that won four Oscars last year was screened during the first day of the festival. The film premiered at the 2019 Cannes Film Festival, where it became the first South Korean film to win the Palme d'Or. The festival will also screen Family Hood and Exit. Registration will be available through an online form for each film. This year, we are getting together in a little bit different format, of course, because of uh, COVID-19. So uh, this year, you know, as you know, the thirsty and taste for culture is insatiable and also never to stop. But we still have to keep uh, our safety measures against COVID-19. So that's why Embassy this year have chosen this remarkable venue of drive-in cinema. I understand this place is the first car park, car theater in the kingdom. So I hope this year that everybody will enjoy their film festival while we, we are keep uh, safe and sound. Well, uh, I'm very much appreciated. Even under the corona situations, many people uh, showed a very hard response. And you know, more than about 500 people applied for these events, but uh, I feel sorry, you know, part, because I cannot provide all the tickets to the all applicants. But this time, uh, this is very hot and beautiful atmosphere and windy, you know, air. So I hope everybody enjoy it without any concern about uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, dangers. The Korean Film Festival starts from since 2013 and this year since the COVID-19 we might have cancelled this show but luckily we have this venue so this year we just host as a drive-in cinema so I hope that everybody enjoys this movie and have some makes more fans for the Korean movies. Actually, Korean Embassy is planning to host as many cultural events as many possible. So I hope the next year, if the COVID-19 situ situation is calms down, then we have host various events that we can show to the very many people.